For over a century, students from Forest Lake area schools have been rewarded with an educational foundation that provides for a bright future. The list of alumni from the school system is filled with success stories. Success as measured in a variety of ways. The district takes pride in offering both opportunities and academic challenges to its students. More than 90% of Forest Lake's graduating seniors move on to some type of post-secondary education, whether at a four-year college, technical school, or the military. Many have attended and continue to attend prestigious Ivy League universities, such as Harvard, Princeton, Stanford, Columbia, and MIT, or major U.S. military academies, such as West Point. Others stay closer to home and enroll in the excellent colleges, technical schools, art schools, and business colleges located right here in Minnesota. Forest Lake alumni are a diverse group. Graduates have gone on to become doctors, lawyers, teachers, scientists, small business owners, military officers, and many have worked in other fascinating vocations. The list of alumni of Forest Lake Area High School includes a Tony Award-nominated Broadway actor, a Harvard Medical School professor, and an award-winning Wall Street economist. Hi, I'm Carla Holt and I'm honored to be one of the graduates of Forest Lake Area Schools to be featured in this series. The following are just a few of the many interesting stories of people who have attended our school district. These men and women have found success in a variety of ways. Personal success, professional success, and success as measured by facing the many challenges we encounter every day of our lives and overcoming those obstacles on our way to becoming better people. Success, it all starts here. I grew up in East Bethel and the house where I live now and I went to Forest Lake Elementary School when there was just one elementary school in Forest Lake and when I, I went there for first and second grade and then in third grade the, uh, the district was growing rapidly in the baby boom and they built a new elementary school in Linwood it was just a four-room school at the time and they, they didn't get it finished in time for the school year to start in September so for the first three months of the year, we went to uh, school in the basement of Sunnyside Church in uh, Linwood. I went to Linwood through sixth grade and then went into Forest Lake to the new junior high school, another, another new building, another one that didn't get finished in time for the school year to start. This was in 1965. I think the last thing to finish up was the gym floor. And we used to go, to go over in the morning and uh, watch as the workmen would put the individual pieces of wood into the, the gym floor in, the, uh, in what is now Southwest Junior High School. And after uh, Southwest, I went to the, to the what, what, is, what became Central Junior High School, but at that time it was the high school. And I was in the last class to graduate from that building. The next year, they, they moved into the new high school. Well, the now 40-year-old new high school, but uh, it, it was the new high school then. I think it was in my senior year when the, the last link between St. Paul and Forest Lake on 35E was completed. And that just tremendously changed the community because suddenly, uh, the commute to Minneapolis and St. Paul was much shorter or took a lot less time and the building just exploded and the, the district started growing dramatically. When I graduated in 71, I think my class, uh, graduating class, had 267 students. The school was, uh, was still pretty small so you were able to do lots of things. I was never really a very good athlete but I still got to participate in, in cross country and basketball and track. and. Uh, uh, we were, you were able to do just about anything you really wanted to do. There were people who would be in sports and uh, band and, and theater. You could do all kinds of different things. I remember particularly a couple of teachers. One was uh, Gwen Hansen, who I had as a junior high teacher. She taught biology in, uh, when I was in junior high. And then uh, she moved over to the high school, so I, I had her for chemistry as well. And she was just a very interesting, very effective teacher. And I, I used to like to tell her that um, I got more college credits from classes I took from her than I got from any, any professor in college because I was able to take some tests when I graduated from high school in biology and chemistry and qualified for some uh, four, four credits in, in each of those subjects in, in college. So she was a great college teacher, not just a junior high and high school teacher. Another teacher I remember is Wally Connor, who taught math. Um, math was one of my favorite subjects, and uh, Wally uh, really went the extra mile in trying to uh, find interesting and effective ways to present mathemat mathematics concepts, which is not an easy thing to do. But uh, he, was a, he was a great teacher. I had him uh, in my senior year in my, uh, my final math analysis class. 
Some of the things that in high school that really did contribute a lot to me ultimately doing the things that I did is one, participation in student government. Uh, it may sound kind of corny, but just learning little things like parliamentary procedure uh, really makes a big difference when you, when you start getting involved in, in politics and government. Um, another thing that w was great about Forest Lake at the time, like uh, as I was saying before, you could do lots of things and um, one of the things I got to do a lot was speak in front of groups and sometimes there were groups, it could be a pep fest, be the, virtually the entire student body, so it would be six or seven hundred students there and I really became pretty comfortable with the idea of speaking in front of a group. Obviously, if you're going to go into law and, and uh, politics, speaking in front of a group is essential and I think it was very beneficial. I uh, really decided on the U of M um, because it was the, the big university in my, in my home state, basically. It wasn't, a, uh, it wasn't like today with a huge search where you're applying to lots of different colleges. The U of M was the only place I really applied. And um, because I had to pay the way, pay my way as I went, I really wasn't in lots of activities at the U. I, I uh, worked pretty much um, from the from the very beginning, from my freshman year all the way through law school. I worked on a very regular basis, sometimes two jobs, sometimes full time while going to school. So I really had very little uh, time for any kind of student activities. From the time I was a young kid, like um, when, I, when my dad was on the city council, I was probably uh, 10 years old or so when he first got elected. So I was always real interested in government. Um, my family's been, my, my grandfather, my father's father, ran for the legislature in 1930 unsuccessfully. Um, but politics and government just always been part of my, uh, my dinnertime conversation. So I, I, I guess I kind of always had it in my head that I would, would get into government. And it just happened that the year that I graduated from law school, uh, the, the person who served in the Senate before me in my, my district announced that he was going to retire. So there was an open seat and I'd been in, uh, active in DFL politics already at that point, so it was kind of natural for me to, uh, to uh, throw my hat in the ring. And as luck would have it, I, I got endorsed in uh, 1980 and won the election. Serving in the legislature is, is probably as good a job as anybody can, can get. Um, in, the, in the years I was there, it's, it seems like it was a less partisan environment when I was there. Although, it, um, from the inside, I think it always seems less partisan than it is from the outside. You, you, you do develop a lot of personal relationships with other legislators and, and a lot of the partisanship uh, that comes through in the media I, I think uh, wasn't there really when, when I was there. But um, one thing I found really fascinating about the legislature is that uh, there are so many things that go on in our day-to-day -day lives where people don't realize that the, that the legislature is involved whether it's uh, drainage ditches or sewer systems or highways some of those things you know about you know we, we know the highways are there but there are all kinds of activities that the legislature is involved with that really make our, our, our lives what they are. And if, if the legislature doesn't function effectively, it really makes a dramatic difference in the, in the quality of life in Minnesota. While serving in the legislature, I also worked as an assistant county attorney in Anoka County for a few years, and then I went into private practice. But then my, uh, when I became chairman of the, uh, the, of the Education Finance Division of the Education Committee, uh, my legislative responsibilities just got to be too, too all-consuming. It just took up too much time, so I had to leave practice. So I was out of practice for uh, a couple of years. And then uh, uh, in 1990, um, uh, Governor Perpich told me he was going to appoint me to the Court of Appeals, and so that's how I happened to get onto the court. It w really wasn't something I had ever, and t until he, uh, he said to me one day that he was considering me for appointment, I don't, I don't think I had ever once spent even a second of my life thinking about becoming a judge. And it was just the fact that he, he tapped me for the job that I, I mean, is, is what made me think of it all in the first place. So it was kind of a, a happenstance there too, an element of chance. The court is kind of like the legislature in that you really get to see uh, things that go on in Minnesota that you wouldn't otherwise realize are, are going on. And it seems like virtually any, any problem of any size whatsoever eventually finds its way into the courts whether it's a, a personal problem like a, like a divorce or a major problem like citing the location of a highway or changing school district boundaries or, or uh, the bridge collapse in, in Minneapolis a couple years ago. All those things eventually find their, their way into court. So you really do find out about uh, a lot of what's going on in the state that you just wouldn't, wouldn't even realize is, is going on, that it all finds its way to the, to the courthouse one way or another. My name is Judge Randy Peterson and I am Forest Lake Area Schools. 
We hope you've enjoyed this series of success story videos. Other features will be added over the next few months and years. So feel free to check back to our website periodically to see more great stories about Forest Lake area schools. I'm Carla Holt. Thanks for watching.